Okay, we'll get started. I want to uh, welcome everybody back who has been here again, who was here before in our previous uh, demonstrations, and invite uh, and welcome all the uh, newcomers, and hope to have you back again. The, uh, this is the second year anniversary of the first time we did a demonstration showing the phenomena where we ignited water and made an enormous amount of power, predominantly in the form of uh, light. And in the intervening time, we demonstrated a number of um, manifestations of how to commercialize that, different uh, engineering designs and prototypes, and that culminated in a uh, device that we showed in uh, July 21st, of 2014, with about 18 months ago. Since then, we've been very busy, and we did a lot of work. I'm going to go through some of the... Um, the uh, trials and travails, the trajectory and different paths we took. Some led to uh, other innovations, some led to other ideas, some were totally a waste of time. That's the way it is in science and engineering. But in, you uh, pick up the pieces, you learn from your mistakes or learn from designs that weren't optimal. Our goal is to commercialize, to have something that can replace fire, that uh, will be lasting and that is, is can dominate in the energy industry. And I think we have that. I think we have a design that can prevail above all other forms of systems, all other forms of energy and power. And uh, it, I believe it is the only, the only solution to climate change. Whether you believe it or not, uh, it will not produce any CO2. It will not produce any pollution of any form. And it, it appears that it can work for all forms of power for stationary and motive, all forms of motive, and, uh, and, it, and it has uh, economic characteristics, can do that without, without the necessity of support from the government. It should be totally driven by its economics. So, yeah, they're running back there now. So we'll just uh, interrupt and let them uh, run the cell. The smoke is the uh, silver vaporizing. We're just running it open so you can see inside of it. It's a firing frequency.
You gonna shut it down? I'll get back. You wanna go more or you wanna it's up to you. Alright, we'll give a little more in a moment. Get back to the lecture. Okay, you guys want to turn it down? We want to keep going. All right, we'll get back to the lecture. So that's the sun. It's sun in a bottle. It's <laughs> another example. So this, I believe this one's on our web. You can see them in the glove box working. And it starts out UV mode. And then, uh, so this is more or less what we were witnessing live, uh, some of the work we did previously. So it gives me a little chance to explain it. So when you see these energetic particles coming out here, that, that's really from the power of the reaction. The, the voltage here is extremely small. It's less than one volt. There's no electric field in here at all. There's no microwave in here. And it literally is making the entire volume incredibly powerful plasma. I'll tell you how incredibly plasma powerful. Uh, I'll show you the black body curve. That black body curve corresponds to about 36 million watts per square meter at that temperature. That's a law of physics. You can use something called the Stefan Boltzmann equation. And if emissivity is one, it's 36 million watts. Now emissivity is probably not one, but even if you take the lowest emissivity imaginable at those temperatures, you're looking at millions of watts per square, me square meter for that, that reaction. So it's extremely, extremely powerful. So you appreciate this. So we had this open, and here actually we have the parts here. There's, a, uh, there's an outer, what we call a cell chamber. There's an inner chamber, which we call the reaction cell chamber. And then there's a dome that is a radiator. So we can insulate this part of the cell so that essentially all the power goes to this top blue dome. And that blue dome can be tungsten and get to, we want to run it at 3,500 degrees Kelvin. Then there's a gap between that top dome and the photovoltaic cells. And the radiation transverses across that gap. So you have the secondary radiator. So we're making black body radiation five, 6,000 degrees Kelvin in here. That's actually a little bit too high. That's making light into the ultraviolet. So we would lose some of that light so we're going to make it at 30, plus there's material constraints. So the ideal would be running this around 3,500 degrees Kelvin using materials like carbon or tungsten. We have a carbon cone in uh, reaction vessel in that, in that uh, chamber. And then uh, having the light secondarily radiate to the PV panels. So it's seeing pure light. It's just like an enormous light bulb. If you look at the filament of an incandescent light bulb, Imagine that spread over, say, uh, a fr uh, say two tenths of a square meter, radiating the PV panel. The reason why I say two tenths of a square meter because if the outside, which we can control, with the outside emissivity is is one, a 3,500 degree Kelvin black body radiates about 11 million watts per square meter. So then we get to our business model. So um, I guess I should say. Uh, we've talked to some manufacturers, and it looks like we could be in production in 2017. 
we probably have some in, in the field testing, uh, generating revenue about around the beginning of 2017 and then be in he heavier production towards the end of 2017. Okay, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. We're going to probably have, we'll have another one. As soon as we get to our next big hurdle, we'll have another one, and we'd love to have you back. So look forward to that. Thank you.